Hello class, welcome. My name is Adewumi Ogufui. I'll be your math teacher for today and likewise in subsequent classes. I'll be going through the National Common Entrance Examination Pass Question. It's basically for Primary 5 and Primary 6. So if you have a copy of this book, this is what we'll be playing with today. Now, I have some questions written. I want you to be able to identify which of the questions I want to treat and join us in just how simple this thing is. Are you ready? So remember, this is the 23rd edition, National Entrance Examination, well detailed and fully comprehensive for federal, state, government, colleges, on mathematics and quantitative aptitude tests. Okay. You go see you go. Yeah, you popular guy, you know him. You go see you go, yes. So now, I, I left the first exam, but it's too close to the content. So I start with the second one. So, if you look at your test book, you will find out that in the second one we have what fraction of two minutes is six seconds? I have that one here. And they say we should divide this by this. I'm going to solve it. Don't be afraid. Then the third one. So if you see this, you can actually see the service on there. So let us now do what we do best. Let's simplify the solution. Are you ready? Okay. Now, let's look at question number one. What fraction of two minutes is six seconds? Anytime you have this kind of question given to you, what you do is this. You change all of them to the same units. I'm going to show you the two ways of doing it. You know, you have two minutes and you have six seconds. So what you do is this. What fraction of two minutes is six seconds? You change these two minutes to seconds so that they will be in the same Denominate, they call it the same ratio. No, let's, let's not call it ratio. To be in the same denominator, the same uh, parameters like this. These two minutes will be 2 times 60, and that should give us about 120 seconds. So, um, 2 minutes is 120 seconds, and this is still the same as 6 seconds. Are you there? So, if they ask you what fraction of Two minutes is six seconds. What you're not going to do is this. Since it's a fraction they're requesting for, then the answer will go like this. Answer equal to six over 120. This six, the smaller one over the bigger one. Is that clear? So that will give us six here, one. Six here will give me 20. So you have one over 20 as the fraction. This is the answer. Is that clear? Are we good? Okay, so it's 1 over 20. That's just one step. Now, another second step, should the case the teacher tells you this. The teacher might decide this, okay, you know these 6 seconds, I can decide to change 6 seconds to minute. If you say, what is 6 seconds in minute? It becomes 6 over 60. Are you with me? 6 seconds in minute will become, this is 6 over 60, because we have 60 seconds make 1 minute. So this will equal to 1 over 10. So 6 seconds a minute is 1 over 10. Are you there? So if we don't want to change all of that to seconds, and we decide to take it to minutes, then you know that 2 minutes will stand as 2 minutes, and 6 seconds becomes 1 over 10 minutes. Are we good? So you can also take it like this and say, okay, the small one over the big one. Remember we said 6 seconds over 120 seconds. But if, for instance, you decide to change the seconds to minute now, so 6 seconds becomes 6 over 60, because 60 seconds make 1 minute. So we have 1 over 10 what? Minute. 6 seconds is 1 over 10 minutes. So you can now take it like option 1 over 10 divided by what? 2. This is the second way of solving it. The first step, I changed 2 minutes to seconds. It became 120 seconds. 6 seconds is still 6 seconds. So I say, okay, so what's the fraction of 6 seconds? In one minute, in two minutes, it has to be six over 120. This is it here. Now, the second method I'm saying is this: if you don't want to take the seconds to uh, the minutes to seconds, you want to leave it as minutes, and that means you have to take the seconds back to minutes also because they must be in the same denominator, as I said to you. So you take it as one over ten divided by what the minute? One over ten minutes divided by two minutes. So we have this. So this is like saying one over ten divided by 2, which goes to 1 over 10 times, you know, if you change the vision to multiplication, it has to be 1 over 2. So the answer will still give you 1 over 20. That's for number 1. So the answer is still the same. 
I'll start again if you, it's a bit confusing. If they give you what fraction of 10 error is 20, uh, uh, 30 cobalt is 3 error, you have to make sure you address the two quantities in the same uh, denominator. Like that grammar is too big for primary 5, 6. We put them in the same level. They must be carrying the same level. Centimeter must be centimeter if you have to take it to fraction. If they give you what fraction of minute is seconds, you either you take the seconds to minute so that you deal with it in minute minutes, or you take the minute to seconds so that you deal with it in what second seconds. You cannot carry minute over seconds and get the right answer. So what I did in the first one is this: I changed this two minutes to seconds. It became one twenty seconds. Six seconds is sixty seconds. So if you ask me what fraction of six, uh, two minutes is six seconds, it becomes six over one twenty. Straightforward. This is easier. You get it. But in the case of event, if they are all in minutes already. But which is not in minute. Six seconds in minute becomes six over sixty. I'm teaching you how to change seconds to minute here. Six seconds in minute is one over ten minutes. So the one over ten, which is still the same as six seconds, I now carry the one over ten and divided it by two, the bigger one, which is two minutes. So this one, I sub this one in seconds to get my answer in fraction, and I sub this one here in minutes to get my answer in what? Fraction. The answer will always be the same. It won't change. So make sure they are the same. All right. So that's for question number one. Now let's go to number two. Number two question looks scary for a primary five without a calculator in the exam. What would you do when you get to the exam? Or right, let's do this together, shall we? We have 8.107 divided by 6.05. The first thing first. Learn to carry all fractions, all decimals to fractions. How do you do this? This becomes 8107 all over, because of the three numbers after decimal point, it becomes over 1000 divided by 605 over 100. I'm changing the decimals to fractions. And how do I do that? The numbers after the decimal point will tell you the numbers of zeros you will have after the first one. So it becomes 8,107 divided by 1,000. In the second one, 605, 6.05 will give us, because of the two decimal points, you are going to have two zeros. And to change division to multiplication, it becomes 8,107 over 1,000 times 100 over 605. So what do we have? These two zeros, we cancel these two zeros. Okay? So that means this is going to give us 8,107 all over 6051. No, 6050. This last 10 will have to multiply 605. Are you there? So it is this now that is the answer. But because the answer is to be expressed in decimal, the question was given in decimal. The answer must reflect in decimal. You carry this number to your long division. How do you do that? Let's take our long division here. We say, 6050 divided by 8107. Okay, let's start. Now, 1, because 6000, you find 6000 in 8000 once. 1 times 6000, you have 6050. Okay, we minus this. Let's see what we, it will give to us. 7, if we roll here, that's 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. Here's not remaining 1, here's 0. So 0 minus 0 is 0. 8 minus um, 2 should give us what? 8 minus 6 should give us 2. Now, you see, 2,000 cannot divide 6,000. So you place decimal point and you add a 0 here. Now, in 20,570, uh, uh, 20, how many times will I find 6,000 in 20,000? This is how you see it. How many times will you find 6,000 in 20,000? It's like seeing it like, how many times will I find 6 in 20? That should be 3. I'll find 6 in 20 three times. So in this situation, see the 6,000 approximate it like 6,000, 20,000. See it like 6 and 20. So that will give us a 3. So I'll take it as 6050 times 3. Let me see what that will give us. 0, 5, take 1, 3, 4, 
returns by uh, 0 is that 0 plus 1, 1. Here will give us what? 18. So we get 18,150. So write that down here. 18,150. You subtract this, you have 0. This is a 2. This will give me a 4. If I take one here, that will give me a 10. 10 minus 8 is 2. On that 2,420. Okay. How many times will I find? Now, nah, how many times will I find 6 in 24? That's like about 4. Because this is about 2,420. Uh, uh, it cannot divide 6,050. So I will add 0 here again. Because after the decimal point, I'm allowed to add as many zeros as possible. So if I'm looking at 6,050 and I'm seeing 24,200, something tells me 4 is the nearest number because I see this as 6 and I see this as 24. 24 divided by 6 should give me like 4. So let's see what this will give us. I'll write 4 here. Let's test it to see. 6,050 times 4. 0, 0, take 2. 0, 2. In 24, yeah, that will give us 24. Okay, now we have answer. So 4 times 6,050 will give us 24200. Zero, zero. When you subtract this, nothing. So this is your answer here. So if we divide these by these, you will get this. I'll start again. Whenever they give you this kind of decimal, I will advise you if you know you're very poor in multiplication and division, when you're going to that common reference exam, if your multiplication and division is a bit sketchy, I would advise you just let this be for a while. Go for a simple questions, then come back for it. But if you practice well, if you see the question, you should be able to do something. Starting again, change the numbers. Since I decimal, change it to fraction. I turn this 8.107 to this. I turn this 6.05 to this. Now, how do I solve this? To change this division sign, I multiply. To change division to multiplication, 100 has to go up. 605 has to come down. So two zeros cancel, two, these two zeros. And I use this 10 to multiply 605. That gave me 807 over 6050. Then I took it straight to what? The long division. Because if you must divide in this situation, you use your long division. So 6050 divided by 8107 is 1. 1 times 60550 is the same. You minus this, you have 2057. Since 2000 cannot divide it, I added a zero after the decimal point. The three was the first number. So putting in that division, that is what you get. That's the answer to that question. I would there. OK, let's see number three. Uh, they gave us a box. Most boxes are in the shape of cuboid. Cuboid is the most popular of all shapes, uh, solid shape or 3D shapes. Is the size of your remote control, the size of your calculator, the size of your fan regulator. Um, a, lot of, a lot of items that you buy, your noodles pack, they are always packed in a carton. And most times those cartons are called cuboid. So this shape here is what? A cuboid. It's the most popular 3D shape that you'll see around. So if they ask us, what is the volume of a cuboid? Volume of cuboid equal to length times breadth times height. Don't forget that to the senior classes when you get to your junior, uh, GSS 1 and GSS 2 and the rest of them. So they say, what is the volume of a cuboid? It is length times breadth times height. It's still the same in the senior class. It's still the same in GSS 1. It's still the same in GSS 2. So here, given the length, which is the longest part, will give us 10 centimeter times breadth should give us 8 centimeter times height should give us 5 centimeter. So we use 5 times 8, that's 40. 40 times 10, that's 400. So we, this gives us 400 centimeter square. Uh, no, cube, precisely. We'll call it cube. 3, because of the power of centimeter times centimeter times centimeter. So all volumes land on cube. So if you look at it, sometimes in the textbook, they may write 400 uh, cube. Uh, Q centimeter. So how do they put it? Let me see. Uh, Q point centimeter. Yeah, is the way they put it there. So if they do that, it, but it's properly written like this. When you call me centimeter cube, not Q cubic centimeter. Yeah, but if you call it cubic centimeter. It's still another way of saying it. Is that clear? 
So this is for one, two, three of the questions. So I'm going to proceed to number four, number five, number six, and the rest of them. All right, so let me get on question number four, okay? 